Hello lads and ladies and welcome to this and welcome back for another video on the channel. Now today we are back for more League One content. It is the start of a heavenly packed period for my League One content. So if you're a fan of a League One club you know what to do, hit subscribe down below. In today's video we are going to be covering the seven new League One teams that came down and came up. We've had two ex-Premier League clubs in Sheffield Wednesday coming down and Bolton coming up and we have lost Hull and Blackpool who have both been in the Premier League who won promotion. So congratulations to the teams that went up this year. We're going to get on to uh, having a look at the teams that came down. What they're about, the manager, the playing style, the goal scoring, how I think they'll do next season and let's get on with it. So we're going to start off with the teams that came down. Obviously, Sheffield Wednesday, and they're a huge football club. You know, I've always wanted to go to Hillsborough. It's an old-fashioned ground. And I was, you know, of that generation that always saw Sheffield Wednesday fighting high in the championship, you know, having a good squad. It wasn't too long ago that they were in the playoffs. You know, semi-final and playoff final against uh, Huddersfield. And they played Hull recently, you know. And, and it's just not gone to plan. And, you know, they've lost a lot of the, the better players. They got rid of the manager. And then, you know, they've had a mixture of managers. They've been a roller coaster. The owner has stopped putting money in. And, you know, they've not paid players. And, you know, players, again, are, are trying to, you know, get money out of the owner again because they've not been paid the wages. And... It's just a mess at Sheffield Wednesday and it needs a new owner. It needs someone to come in and, you know, grab Sheffield Wednesday by the horn because they're a good football club. The potential they've got is incredible. They've got a great stadium, a great fan base. It's, when it goes right, it'll be rocking. And, and I just hope that they can, you know, solidate. And, you know, do I think they'll come back straight back up next season? I don't. I believe... I believe they won't have enough quality. I think they've let a lot of their main core of the squad go. You know, Westwood, you know, Lees, Kachunga. You know, they're just being a few. And I don't think they'll have the resources to go again. I think if they can do a Wigan and just about stay up, I think that'll do for Wednesday right now. And um, I do hope that Wednesday can sort themselves out, I'll be honest with you, because I like them as a football club and I'm looking forward to playing them next season. Next up, Rotherham United, the yo-yo club that is Paul Warner's manager. I like him a lot. You know, he's got them set up in a good way. You know, he took over in a really bad time for them when they were losing games of football. And, you know, they went down awfully, really. Bottom of the league, you know, won promotion again with them. And, you know, literally came back down, won promotion again. And then, obviously, got relegated again last season. And, you know, very unlucky when you think they just chew a lot of games and they should have won, you know, didn't score enough goals, looked a bit burnt out towards the end of the season, so I think it's going to be a shame, I think they'll go again, I think they've got a good squad, when you look at it, a settled squad, a good manager, you know, Freddie Lepardo they've got there, you know, they've got, you know, decent core at the back as well, decent midfielders as well, so I think they'll be okay, they've got a lot of their players that didn't really play for them go, like Proctor, Cal Vassell, Clark Robinson go, so I don't think they've lost too many, and uh, I think they'll be okay to go again next season, and um, I hope I hope that it's going to be a good game when we play them at the New York, or when we play them at Highbury Stadium. Next up, the underdogs that are Wickham Wanderers. Wickham again, they fought till the end. They actually went on a decent little run. I think they won like eight games out of the last 17 or something like that. And again, they were incredible. They went till the end. And I saw Benjamin Bloom's video and it's, he does a what went wrong when the team gets relegated. You cannot really say that about Wickham because, you know, they were saying, oh, you're not going to even get 20. You're not even going to get 30 points, some were saying. They're going to finish rock bottom. And... You know, they still had a chance on the last day to stay up. They had to win about 14-0. But, again, they still had that chance. They still had that core. And while Gareth Ainsworth is there, I think they'll always have a chance of winning promotion because he's built a spirit there. He'll bring some good plays in. They have lost Fred on Udimi and they've released Darius Charles, who have been there for a long time. So, how will that affect them? And I think they'll come again. They'll strengthen. They've got a great manager there who knows what, what, what it's like to get out of League One, knows how it's like to consolidate in a league, and um, Ainsworth won't splash the cash, but it'll be more than fine to keep a healthy Wickham in League One at least next season. On to the four that came up now. So the teams that came up, Cheltenham obviously won the league. They were fantastic throughout the season. Honestly, they were... 
They just had that spirit where they never gave up and they just kept going till the end. And they came up with 82 points in the end. And again, 44 of those came at home, 38 away. They had the joint best home form in the league with Salford City, but away, they were terrific as well. They've got some great players. Matthew Blair got League One experience, just signed a new deal out. They made their top goal scorer with nine. They only scored 61 goals last season and only. And for a team that wins the league, you normally expect them to score 70, 80, possibly into the 90s at times. And that just shows the core of how good their defence was, how many clean sheets they kept, how organised at the back. And Duff has done a terrific job of solidating that. And, you know, if you can score one, they knew they could keep a clean sheet. And if you can win a game 1-0, they'll be just fine. And again, that's what they were. And I think they can do that next season in League One. And I think they'll stay up, if I'm honest. And uh, looking forward to playing Cheltenham. It's the first time I go to their ground. You know, we've played them in the past when we've played them in... Uh, League Two, when Morris scored on his debut, I think it was, and uh, looking forward to it, going to be a cracking game, and uh, Cheltenham, great fan base, great little ground there, and uh, a good squad that they can add to, and uh, a decent manager when backed. At second, it was, of course, Cambridge United in the third tier for the first time in 17 years. Again, they had, you know, Paul Mullen scoring 32 goals, again, Goals coming from other lads as well. And, you know, scored goals, you know, conceded a few more than, you know, they'd shelt them. But again, you know, scored goals a lot of the time, you know. And I think they had a 4-4 against Harrogate recently, didn't they? And, uh, no, but they got the job done. Mark Bonner, great manager. I, I like him a lot. Very inexperienced. And you can't believe that, you know, Mark Bonner's going to manage against Sunderland next year. And it just shows you what a bit of trust that a club's board can put into a manager. You know, believe, you know, promote from within, you know, and give someone a chance. And if you give, 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 give a manager a chance in football, especially a young one, the rewards are very, very high. And that's what Cambridge got. And it's good to see. It's really good to see. Look at Thomas Frank at Brentford. Just been promoted at the weekend. One win in his first 10. Got promoted. And that reminds me a bit like what Cambridge have done with Mark Bonner. Come in, seen the job through and done an absolutely fantastic job. And uh, will this open league one next season? I do believe they'll need to add, keep Paul Mullen because... 32 goals, you know, it's a lot of your goals that you would lose if you got rid. And we saw the damage at Swindon now when they lost Ian Doyle, who scored in his 30s, and Jerry Yates, who got a lot as well. Next up, what an absolute miracle. Bolton Wanderers finished third. They were 19th in January slash February. Ian Evitt was going, I still believe we can get promoted with Bolton fans, football fans. Even me were laughing at that going, delusional. I don't think that'll happen. And they went on the most unbelievable runs. It was 16 to 17 games unbeaten. Ian Doyle, Sartovic scoring goals. They had goals from all over. They scored 59 goals in the season. They did concede 50 goals, which again, is over that one point, uh, one goal per game. Cambridge conceded 49 and uh, Cheltenham 39 for comparison. So, again, a few more than Cheltenham, around the same as Cambridge. But again, when you have an Ian Doyle in your side that scored 19 goals this season, you are going to win games of football. And that's what they did. Ian Everett, again, made a few changes. You had Billy Krellin. Probably cost him a few games. Brought Jilks in. Experience. He had Baptiste, who he's played with at Blackpool. So he brought players in in January that were his players. Maybe at the start of the year, they weren't his players. When you got his players that could probably play in League One or possibly low-end championship, he got the job done and deservedly so. Bolton went up with an unbelievable run. He won on the last day against Crawley to get a, an unforgettable playoff and they're back in League One for the first time of asking this season. Next up, the playoff winners, it was, of course, Morecambe. What an unbelievable achievement by the players, Derek Adams, the board. And that's just what it shows. You lost Jim Bentley, who left to go to AFC Fylde. Again, they've literally just finished above the relegation zone every season. The favourites to go down. They won't stay up, they said. They're not good enough to challenge the top half, even. And that's what Derek Adams did. He finished okay last season. And he th as soon as he came in, he goes, I want to take this club into League One. I want to take this club to new heights. No more little Morgan football club. You know, it doesn't matter about finances. We will fight with the big guns. That is what they've done. 23 wins in the normal season. Unbelievable. Missing out on the last day. Disappointment. 
However, they beat Tramier over two legs in the playoffs. Again, a brilliant achievement. And then to go and beat Newport yesterday, as you are seeing this video, a great achievement. Was it a penalty? I don't think so. But again, I think I think the look rides itself out throughout the season and they've got themselves into League One for the first time in their history. And this talk about Derek Adams going to Bradford, it'd be a stupid move if so. If Morecambe come down, it was expected. If he keeps them up, his stock will be high and he can probably get a better job. Uh, Bradford, they'll probably sack him after five or six defeats in a row, whereas Morecambe will stay loyal. And what a job Derek Adams has done. In my opinion, he's got to be manager of the season for bringing little old Morecambe up. And they are the seven new teams. We welcome Sheffield Wednesday. We welcome Rotherham. We welcome Wickham. Cheltenham. Cambridge, Bolton and Morecambe all arrive in League One. We are going to be covering League One as a whole from now on on this channel. So if you're a League One fan or just come into League One or never seen my face on your screen before, please hit subscribe down below. Any help will be appreciated. Until next time, guys, I will see you later. Up the cods.